Ah, okay. So I'm already recording here. Hi there. Okay, so um, I haven't been in here in a while on YouTube, uh, nor from this Mac, but I wanted to come in and talk a little bit about things that um, have been coming to mind with so much that's going on. Uh, I guess you know, it's me, Debbie Hazelton. If you clicked on my channel, if you're new here, welcome. And please feel free to like, subscribe, share, and all those good things. Um, you know, there's so much going on and so many different thoughts and feelings and reactions that people are having with all of this about the corona. <laughs> and I guess one of the things that keeps coming to mind is no matter who meant what, no matter who is meaning anything to happen or had an agenda, no matter who means what, God always means it for good. If you want to call it God, if you want to call it supreme power in the universe, presence, essence, that power means it for good. I think there is a power that made all things that we know to be wonderful. Any connections that we feel that we have, any ways that we have ever known love, any ways the beauty of music, the wonder of, uh, of food, of nature, of connections, everything that we have ever known and loved came from this one source. And if that source can make all those wonderful things, then that source is always going to reign supreme as far as I see it. And therefore, everything we have ever loved will always be returned or we will always be returned to it if we're feeling a separation. So that being said, I really think that it seems, it seems silly to panic. You know, um, one of the things that I'm noticing is how hurriedly people are going about closing everything down, canceling tons of things, and that's not all bad. I actually think there's another reason for it beyond the virus. I think it's part of the great awakening that if we stop in our tracks and we make a complete stop, a complete pause that says, I'm not going to continue in the same old, same old. And in doing that stopping and doing that pausing, we have the opportunity to make new changes, for lots of things to change, for lots of people to waken See, I think that kind of stopping and that kind of pausing is really a good thing. I think that's okay. What I think is rather silly is all this panic about this, this virus when um, we have flu and colds and all kinds of things going around lots of times, <laughs> lots of years. But the complete stop or the the break in doing things the same old ways, I think is a good idea. And in that, wow, I think we get to look at what are we doing? You know, I hope some people are thinking, gee, am I washing my hands enough? Am I watching my, washing my hands long enough? Can I do a better job with how I handle it if I have to cough? Can I stay home if I have a cold? Do I need to use sanitizer more often? Can I do some other things to take care of myself? Okay, I think those are great questions. The other thing that occurs to me is, you know, I heard somebody say, now remember, this virus, it's alive. Well, guess what? I grew up believing and feeling that everything is alive. And to this day, it is still a big factor in my belief system. I think everything is alive. Every little essence of life 
So that means that I don't just think plants are alive. I think everything that we pay attention to, we feed it. Everything that we engage with, we feed it. We relate to it. And that means that how we think and feel, all of those energies are alive. Every thought is alive. Every feeling that we have about other people is alive. So a lot of times people will say something really mean and awful and they'll, they'll say, well, I didn't do it. Or they'll say, well, I sort of thought it, but I didn't say it. Well, guess what? If we think it, if we spend energy on it, in it, we are giving attention to it and every bit of it is alive. So there's been so much in the last few years about people fighting and being at odds with so much in the world and all this political stuff. And there's a lot of projection that goes along with it. I didn't vote for Trump. I can't say that I like every single thing that he says or does, but I do believe that he's in there for a reason. And there may be a lot about why he's in there that we still don't know. And it doesn't mean that we have to just say yes, yes, and go along with everything. But assuming that he's wrong about everything and fighting and people trumping against other people, isn't that interesting that that's his last name? Trumping opinions against other opinions. Well, maybe we need to look at, because now we have this, this virus and Corona, something about the head. And I heard Case with Everyday Masters talking about the crown chakra. And what if this is a waking of the crown, the head, the mind? I think it's also an invitation to look at what are we doing with our aliveness and with the aliveness that's everywhere else? Are we going, ew, ooh, a germ? Ooh, that person. Ooh, that belief system. Oh, that opinion. Well, furthermore, every germ, every body fluid, everything that we would consider messy that comes from our own body, it's all made of the earth. Every single essence of humanness is coming from the earth. So what are we saying? If we freak out just because somebody blows their nose and coughs, just because somebody happens to have a body odor and we freak out and we think that dirt is bad. Yeah, I tell people all the time, dog and cat hair in my world are sacred. It's not dirt just because you can see it. Guess what? Try living in the unseen where a huge percentage of spirit really is. Spirit is largely in the unseen. So again, I think that every single thing that poses itself as another attribute, another something of someone else for us to deal with is another riddle of how can we live outside the box? What can we do how can we learn and take from what is being presented to us through another person, through our own health, through our own body fluids and odors and messiness sometimes? How can we learn to love more, whoever and whatever it is? It doesn't mean that we have to like everyone and everything. And it doesn't mean that we have to go and judge our judging or someone else's judging. It's tempting and it's easy to do. I think that as things are closing, it's an opportunity for us to pause and to be in a, a place of being, a place of 
quiet at times, a place of re-engagement, a place of blessing others, a place of blessing ourselves, and a huge lot of being grateful, hugely thankful for so many things in our lives, maybe some things that we have been too busy to pay attention to. I've been so busy lately that I've hardly been playing this harp that I got. And I know as I sit down and play a little more and, you know, spend a little more time with it, I think, wow, you know, this really feels good. I need to spend more time with it. Well, guess what? There may be some opportunities to do that with some of the things that are being canceled. It is so easy for us really to rearrange our thoughts and our habits and our feelings. It is so easy. I used to think it was really hard, especially as I was deciding everything based on emotions only. And even now I'm about to, uh, I have officially retired my guide dog, but I'm about to take her back to the school where she came from. I am about to take her back and, oh goodness, silly mail, um, silly <laughs> things coming into the screen, but I'm about to take her back. And that's something that when I did it before with one of mine, I was so brokenhearted. I was upset about that for years. Now I'm excited for her and I'm excited for me too. I will miss her. She's my favorite, my absolute favorite, my cute little gold adore. And at the same time, I have more strength than ever to embrace this change and welcome it. And in the time that I'm waiting for it, I am absolutely enjoying the one that I have before I take her back to them. I am enjoying every moment. It's a namaste. So yeah, you know, do I feel good every moment? Am I absolutely poised and and joyous every moment? Nope, because I'm human too and I'm learning and I'm in this journey as we all are. You know, sometimes when you put a plate down, it just sits down on the table and it's a nice even sit. Sometimes you put a plate down and it kind of wobbles, wobble, 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 wobble. <laughs> and, and then sometimes we put one down and maybe it breaks. Well, I think we're going through all kinds of changes and how we put a plate down one day might be very different from how we put it down the next or how the effect of it that happens might surprise us. There may be wobbles. There may be things that seem to break. There may be something new that comes out of the breaks. And there may be something new on that plate that fills up that just is in place, ready and waiting. So take heart, hang in there, and just remember that everything that comes ultimately, no matter how it might seem, everything that comes from the earth, everything that comes from the body, Everything that comes, even from other people who seem like, oh man, what are they bringing? Everything shows us something that is good if we just allow it to come in. So many, many thanks. Lots of love to you all. It's always good to hear from any of you. And uh, we're always connected. So just remember, you're never, never, never alone. This is an ultimate time to be alive. And thoughts are living things, just like germs. They're all living. And so love, 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 and be well. Be about the well that you already are and have. Let's see, did I record? Yes, I did. Okay, here we go. 
Thank you. <laughs> well, I hope I get out of here. It wants me to put in something else. Let's see. Okay. What are you? Oh, it wants something else. Okay. Hmm. It's because. <laughs> Let me see if I can. Here I go. Here we go. 